Okay, okay. And I think YouTube says you're live. Hey, Prowls. Welcome back to another show. So we have a lot to unpack today. I want to welcome you back. It's Mike Mutzler here. We're going to talk about the ketogenic diet and the microbiome, specifically how the ketogenic diet and ketones themselves affect levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate and levels of a pro-inflammatory interleukin-17 producing T helper cell called the IL-17 or sorry, called the TH17 cell. We're going to dive into blood sugar dysregulation and uh, COVID-19 outcomes. And we're also going to talk about some other things related to leptin. So uh, super grateful that you're here. As always, uh, if you enjoy this content, hit that like button and let's just dive right into it because I know a lot of you, uh, like many of us in life, are pressed for time. So let's just dive right into the, the diet related aspects first. And then we're going to, we'll talk about the blood sugar metabolism. So uh, a study that recently came out, my friend uh, Frida Tehran actually sent this over to me and we're going to be doing a lot more on this and unpacking this, but the title of the paper is Ketone Bodies Exert Ester Ordinary Suppression of Bifidobacterium and TH17 Cells. So let's just kind of unpack uh, what this really means, and then we'll talk about this picture a little bit more uh, in just a moment. So let me just kind of, uh, I'll unclick this layer and we can dive into it. So um, your T helper cells have different subtypes. We have the TH1, TH2, and TH17. Uh, there's others as well. But the TH17 um, T helper subtype releases a very pro-inflammatory interleukin called interleukin-17. And what these scientists actually showed in both humans and animals is that the ketogenic diet and ketones themselves more specifically, what they did is they actually reduced levels of bifidobacterium, which is generally thought to be a healthy you know, health-promoting uh, gut bacterial genus and species. So it low, the ketones, not the lack of fiber in the diet. So this is what's really interesting is that ketones in and of themselves may have some inside-out level of control where they're actually changing what's going on within the gastrointestinal tract itself. And I think this is super fascinating because we've all known and kind of thought for a while that some of the benefits of the ketogenic diet is the dearth or lack of carbohydrates, but it may be due to the fact of how ketones are affecting the composition and the ecology and the immunological activity of the gastrointestinal microbiome. And to me, this is so exciting, so fascinating. Again, this story is just emerging. I'm going to plant the seed here because I find that with repetition, we tend to, these things stick. And so I just wanted to share this with you. It's hot off the press. We're going to be unpacking this in many other videos. So what does this mean on a practical level? Because if you embark on the ketogenic diet or take MCT oil, powder, or liquid, or you take exogenous ketones, does that mean that you're going to have dysbiosis and lack of this protective probiotic species uh, known as bifidobacterium? And there's various different you know, um, genus and species and, and genre uh, of this. We have Bifidobacterium longum. We have Bifidobacterium lactis. We have all these very protective Bifidobacterium species. So what does this mean? Well, I don't know. I, I'm really considering like maybe taking more probiotics or having more fermented foods when I'm eating my meals, okay? Because we know that when I'm in the fasted state or you are in the fasted state, presumably your levels of ketones are going to be higher. You're, there might be some you know, crosstalk and correlation with ketones uh, in the gastrointestinal tract. And you know, unless you have an autoimmune disorder, uh, such as rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis, wherein higher levels of TH17 cells and or their interleukins, like interleukin-17 is a problem, you know, then, then maybe you want to support your levels of bifidobacterium. So this was just a food for thought. Also, it reminded me and made me think about the precision and personalization of the ketogenic diet, where some people may do better on a ketogenic diet because it, it might be reducing the diversity of their microbiome and, and maybe they have bacterial imbalances. You know, it just, it's too early to tell, but it helps me to kind of figure out uh, and, and gives us just another Another tool, another th question, another thing to think about when deciding whether or not the ketogenic diet is good or right for you. Okay, so with that, let's kind of cut to something that we've been talking about a lot. And this was a new paper. Was it published in Diabetology? So I think this is a really interesting paper, and it, it, dovetail it dovetails and piggybacks on a narrative that we've been talking a lot about, particularly, you know, I've been sharing this a lot over on Instagram, you know, because I've been critical of our government and public health related officials only focusing on public health policies that so-called reduce transmission of the virus, but yet have no education, no emphasis, no dialogue or narrative around dietary and lifestyle strategies that affect our body's own metabolism and immune, and immune system when or if we get the virus. Now, I think that's equally important because I think, 
you know, why we're now California is shutting down again. We know other states are considering shutting down. There's more limitations on dining, on eating out, on all of this. We know Israel just came out of lockdown again. So we know that this virus isn't going away. And we know that the shutdowns and the stay home orders, they might have slowed things down a little bit, but clearly vulnerable people are still being effective affected by this. So why don't we start educating the vulnerable people about things they can do to make them less vulnerable? My gosh, I mean, look at that. Could you imagine if we help people become less vulnerable instead of just widespread shutting down businesses? My gosh, what a novel idea. I know it's crazy. Well, there's scientific evidence to support the idea that you and the people you care about should reduce their sugar consumption and increase their exercise. Let me read to you a quote. Evidence indicates that a chronic hyperglycemic state was associated with impaired immunity and hyperglycemia as an independent pr uh, predictor for lower respiratory tract infections and upper respiratory tract infections, by the way, and poor prognosis. In particular, a few previous studies have shown that hyperglycemia was a risk factor for high mortality and high morbidity and mortality from severe acute respiratory syndrome. That's the first SARS that happened and also the, the MERS, the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. So we know that other coronavirus pandemics, we know from outcome data from those pandemics that guess what? Hyperglycemia and poor glucose regulation is linked with guess what? Increased disease severity. Okay, so we have everyone wearing masks. We have everyone staying home now. We have businesses shutting down. Who is telling people to reduce their, their consumption of refined and processed sugar? Who's telling people that they should get more recreational exercise, that they should walk 10, 15, 20,000 steps per day? Because guess what? Those things, exercise, reducing intake of liquid sugar, processed sugar, guess what it does? Is it improves your blood sugar control. Imagine that. If you have better blood sugar control, guess what? Your chances of having increased mortality and morbidity is lower. Again, here is the study. I get really excited about this and kind of irritated because it's, it's amazing how quickly people have adopted strategies to mitigate and slow down the spread. Social distancing, i.e. wearing face masks, washing their hands. But people are still buying sugar. People are still buying liquid sugar. We know that the fastest way to induce diabetes is to, guess what, drink liquid corn syrup, liquid corn sugar derived liquids. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. So I'm not some wacko in a bubble talking about this. There are actual credible scientists that have been talking about this saying, hey, pals, check it out. Here's a study we talked about. We reviewed this very study back on May 1st. Now, two months later, we have yet another data set with hundreds of people showing the same thing. The mortality, the morbidity in people who have impaired glucose regulation is much higher compared to people who don't have glucose dysregulation. Now, here's a book and an interview that we're gonna be talking more about uh, with a good friend of ours, Ben Bickman. He's been on the podcast at length, friends. Okay, less than 12% of Americans in the United States, and it's even worse in different countries in South America and other parts of Asia, have good glucose and, and insulin uh, dynamics and metabolism. Okay, less than 12%, okay? That means that a vast majority of people are in this high-risk category because they have glucose dysregulation. Glucose dysregulation translates into immunological dysfunction, into a compromised immune system, into, check it out, a compromised post-vaccine rise in antibody levels. Really important stuff. Everyone is staying home, waiting for the vaccine. Well, newsflash people, the flu vaccine has been around for how long? Seven, eight, nine, 10 years. It's less than 47% effective, meaning that a large percentage of people who get the vaccine don't produce sufficient levels of antibodies to offer protection. So do we think that a quick, over, a rushed, a, a really rushed vaccine for the coronavirus is just going to, you know, uh, resolve humanity of this, of this pandemic, of this virus? It's kind of unlikely. I, it's kind of, for, just on a, on a practical level, it's unlikely. I hope it helps some people. I really do because I want to get back to normal life just like you do. I really feel I have friends that are personal trainers. I have friends that are massage therapists. I have friends that are small business owners. I love going out to dinner. I have, you know, it's it's really heartbreaking that these people have their business, businesses being shut down because there's a disproportionate a prevalence of adult Americans and adults throughout the, the world who are metabolically unhealthy, who are now getting really, really sick, okay? 
it's, it's, it's a damn shame. And so I think we all need to do our part. Please spread this word, spread the message that, that blood sugar dysregulation is going to make you more sick if you get infected with this virus. This virus doesn't appear to go away. Staying home doesn't appear to be a very viable strategy. We know suicides are increased. We know that depression is increased. We know that people are consuming more alcohol, more marijuana, domestic violence, violence in general, gun-related violence is through the roof. Okay, friends? Okay, so this is a reminder to let you know that these episodes are brought to you by our very own Myoscience Nutrition. We have a great promotion going on right now. If you order any one of our two variants of our essential fatty nutrients, which is a vitamin D, vitamin K2 formulation, you get a free bottle of cod liver oil derived vitamin A. That, that is a free to over $20 value. So if you just go to myoscience.com, that's M-Y-O-X-E-I-E-N-C-E.com. So we know that vitamin A, Look, unless you're eating a lot of liver, you're probably not getting sufficient levels of vitamin A. Most people are like, ew, liver, I, I don't wanna eat liver. Liver's gross, I don't know how to cook it. So if you're one of those people, you definitely want to consider vitamin A. And so this is a great way to save on vitamin A, again, by going to myoscience.com, that's M-I-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. If you, with any order of essential fatty nutrients, you get a free bottle of cod liver oil derived vitamin A. Okay, so let's get into uh, T regulatory cells. This is really important, I think, for a lot of us to consider, uh, you know, this new therapy. And let me just kind of preface this conversation with this study that was just published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. T regulatory cells for treating patients with COVID-19 and acute respiratory distress syndrome, two case reports. So we're going to unpack this, but I feel like it's important that I give you a little bit of uh, historical context and background so that you kind of understand why I'm so excited and why scientists might be so excited with the T regulatory cells. So Let's just back up and do a really big 50,000 foot view, okay? So we've been talking on this channel extensively about the pathophysiology of the virus. We talked in March extensively about how other animals are infected with novel coronaviruses such as the SARS-CoV-2, but also SARS-CoV-1, MERS, and other coronaviruses. How bats coexist quite well with these coronaviruses is they mount a very robust and very responsive initial immunological response characterized by high levels of interferon, and then they, they, they don't have this chronic inflammation. It's just like this massive early response, and then they kind of chill out. That's kind of the exact opposite as to how humans are responding to this, where initially there's little to no interferon response, especially people who are really sick with this and end up in the ICU and intubated and all that sort of stuff. Not a very robust initial immune response, but there's a very delayed and then very robust cytokine storm. Now, this is ultimately, if you read the pathophysiology reports and look at some of the autopsies and things like that, there's multi-organ failure and damage from the cytokine storm because of the body's own immune system. Now, part of this over-exaggerated immunological response could be linked to aberrant T regulatory cell function because the T regulatory cells are involved in suppressing chronic inflammation, in suppressing overactivation of the immune system. I see that it's getting very bright in here. <laughs> Uh, this is the time of the day where the sun is just blaring, so I had to move a, a few things there. So we know that the T regulatory cells are involved in taming immunological responses. We know that in situations where there's allergies, where there's asthma, which I have a little thing I'm going to share with you in just a moment about allergies that I think you'll find super fascinating. I generally suffer from allergies, but I've been using this little nose dealy bob that I'm going to share with you in a minute, and it's been phenomenal, but I digress. Okay. T regulatory cells are helpful in calming chronic inflammation. They help to reshift, you know, uh, maintain homeostasis, for lack of a better word, within the immune system. Now, we know that metabolic dysregulation, hyperinsulinemia, over uh, obesity, um, excess uh, fat tissue, things like that, create levels of high levels of leptin, which can alter the T regulatory cells. So, so this kind of you know, this transitions from what we were just talking about with the metabolic dysregulation linked with increased disease severity and increased mortality in patients with COVID-19. We also know that obesity is a problem. Now, this could explain mechanistically, uh, you know, the therapeutic effects of giving T regulatory cells can explain kind of how that works uh, based upon now what we know about um, the pathophysiology. So T regulatory cells are really important. They help to suppress chronic inflammation. Now, that's what, why uh, 
purportedly why these scientists have uh, been using this as a therapy. So uh, this is just one of probably many papers to come, but these researchers, I, I think they were on the East Coast somewhere in Boston, I believe, and what they actually did was actually, they gave um, blood cord, umbilical cord, T-regulatory, umbilical cord-derived T-regulatory cells to two patients who were essentially going to die from the virus. And what they found is that these people were in a coma, they were on a ventilator, they were super, super sick. And what they found is that when giving these individuals the T-regulatory cells, they improved really precipitously, like very, very quick. So their disease severity went down, their cytokine levels went down, and uh, they're off ventilation, they're doing much better. And so it may be such that these T-regulatory cells are helping to mitigate this cytokine storm. Now, you might be thinking, well, hey, Mike, I don't have like a T regulatory cell dealer, so what the hell do, do I care about this? Well, here's what's in, important about this, okay? Stress management, breath work, that reminds me to calm down, uh, meditation, exercise, eating a, a healthy whole food derived diet. All of these things help to balance your T regulatory cells. These cells are very important. We, we should, whether or not there's a virus pandemic or not, we should be concerned with and care about these T regulatory cells. That's why I'm not trying to plug my book at all because it's old, I'm working on a new version. But that's why in the book, Belly Fat Effect, we talked extensively about the T regulatory cells because we know that leptin released from our fat tissue and there's a direct proportion between how much body fat you have, how much leptin you have. Leptin squashes the T regulatory cell function. And that's why you see asthma, you see chronic inflammation, you see obese uh, allergies, you see autoimmune disease, you see cancer increased in obesity. It's partly mechanistically, uh, the, the, the issue is from leptin-derived suppression on the T regulatory cells. And that causes other CD4 T helper cells, such as the Th1, the Th17 that we talked about with the ketogenic diet, and the Th2 cells to become in balance. So without the T regulatory cells, there's more immunological crime. Does that make sense? So this is how, why Exercise is so important right now. This is why fitness is so important right now. And this is why I'm so frustrated that gyms are closed, yet McDonald's and Carl's Jr. and Chick-fil-A remain open. Give me a break. It's just, it's unbelievable. So, uh, friends, if you want to chill out, you should try uh, broad spectrum, biodynamic grown phyto cannabinoids derived from hemp. So I'm a huge fan of HelloNed. They've been a longtime sponsor. I love this for optimizing my sleep. So I take this every other night. I don't take it every night because I don't want to chronically push any one pathway too much, especially the endocannabinoid system. I think it's great to support, but I've been doing like every other day dosaging. So what I, what I like to do with this formulation and why I like it is it's biodynamically grown. It's family owned. A lot of these cannabinoid formulations and companies that are emerging, they're owned by private equity groups, people who don't really even know much about nutrition. They're just jumping on the wave. But what's unique about Ned is they're family owned, they're independently owned, and all of this is grown yeah, by, a, by a biodynamic farmer on the western slope of Colorado. Really, really cool formulation, and you can save 15% off this amazing liquid by going to helloned.com forward slash H-I-H. Again, one more time, that's helloned.com forward slash H-I-H. It's one of the only hemp-derived liquids that I personally use and recommend to clients. It has a really nice flavor, has a nice calming effect, you know, if you're trying to cut down your alcohol consumption and you're wondering, you know, what are some other things you can do, you can definitely try cannabinoids. So uh, use the promo code HI to check out to save. So I can see it's getting super bright. And that means that uh, it's time for some questions. <laughs> Here we go. Whoa, it's getting super, super bright. All right. Uh, friends, thank you so much for being here. I'm glad that you're all here. Um, and here we go. Let's let's kind of dive into it. Uh, what do we got here? We, get, we have a lot of questions, so I'm very grateful for all those questions. Gloria is here. We have Aaron in the house. Um, <laughs> Aaron says, uh, that's how you get the Ronies from uh, donuts. He's got the donut emoji. Ryan is here. What's up, Ryan? Spive21 is here again. Spive Thanks for being here, Viv. Um, you are amazing. Um, we got folks from uh, Australia. We got folks here from California. Uh, we got folks, uh, we, we got uh, Citrin42 says uh, she quit alcohol this week, which is phenomenal. Um, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, hey, friends, is this, do you like this type of format on, on a Tuesday, Thursday afternoon? Um, I, I just found that Mondays were super busy. I was, it was, it was just, I, I want to do Tuesday, Thursday. If you like Tuesday, Thursday, hit that like button. Let me know in the comments. Um, 
Aaron says, stressing out over sugar can weaken your immune system too. I know. You know what? <laughs> I, I feel like some of the stress from this thing has probably affected, affected my health. Uh, but what do you do? Um, uh, we got we got Tiger off three five four says I love your passion. You'd think a pandemic would be a wake up call for how unhealthy our society is. I think it is. I think this is exposing how unhealthy we are as a culture. Uh, Ryan, what's up from Chicago? Oh man, I miss Chicago this time of year. Chicago is so amazing in July, August, September. Um, I just love uh, you know. Um, Lakeview Boulevard and that River North area. It's just so amazing. Um, uh, suggestions for quitting alcohol. Gosh, um, to be honest, I mean, it's, you can say this is a plug for our product, but My Relax and Calm, it's got some natural beet flavor in it, so it kind of looks like a rosé. Put that in a wine glass. Okay, it's calming, it's got L-theanine, it's got GABA. You can put a little Redmond Real Salt in there with the My Relax and Calm, and you got you have your electrolyte because of magnesium and taurine. You got inositol, you got L-theanine, you got GABA. So it's a nice broad spectrum, and it makes you feel calm, uh, and it supports a whole bunch of other bodily functions. So I use that uh, on the weekdays because I don't drink at all during the week. Um, not that I drink a ton on the weekends, but I do like to have a glass of wine or two on a Saturday night. Um, so that's just me. Ketone says, uh, bro, it's the insulin which causes high COVID reactions. Yeah, maybe. Um, is it the insulin or is it the glucose or both? I mean, it's, it's, it's probably both. So you, you can't really separate insulin from high glucose. Um, they're, they're um, you know, kind of a bi-directional process. So, um, whew, friends, uh, super grateful that you are all here. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, we got more stuff coming to you Thursday afternoon. I got a cool video tomorrow for you about all about magnesium. Uh, how to think through purchasing magnesium uh, in, in terms of the forms, how they affect the body, all that sort of stuff. So um, uh, Elizabeth says, what's the name of your book, Belly Fat Effect? Yeah, it's called Belly Fat Effect. Um, again, it's I wrote it in 2013, okay? So if you want to buy it, that's cool. I'm not promoting it. I don't even make any money off it. Um, but we do talk about immunometabolism. So that's why I'm rewriting it because I think it's actually, you know, not trying to toot my horn, but it was it was ahead of its time. Uh, there was no imp there was no reason to talk about um, immunometabolism back then. No one cared. No one gave a crap. But now it's kind of top of mind. So that's why I'm kind of refreshing it because there is a lot of new information. Um, Janet is keto. Says I love my Oregon Pinot Noirs. Ah, I got I can't argue with that. A, a nice Oregon Pinot. It's a yeah. Uh, no no question uh, about that. Um, yeah. Okay. So we're getting some people saying Tuesday and Thursdays are good for them. So we're bringing the heat, bringing the science Tuesday, Thursdays. Friends, thank you for being here. And uh, thanks for sharing this video with people that you care about. Uh, what I'm going to do is update the show notes so that you get access to, to that. And I'm going to drop this audio in iTunes. We'll catch you on a future video down the road. Have an awesome evening. Thanks for tuning all the way in. T uh, catch you all later. <laughs> I was going to say talk to you soon. All right. Bye now.